Welcome to the Torrent List Podcast with Michael Painter. I am Dando now. Before we get into things, can I please just ask you guys that since this show is run completely voluntarily, can you just do two things? Like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash torrent this. The link's in the description of this video. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. It literally takes two clicks of your time. Really do appreciate the support, guys. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the Torrent This Podcast with Michael Painter. Hey, this is Michael Painter, and you are listening to Torrent This with Dando. It's the Torrent This Podcast. I am Dando now. I am joined today by my guest, who is a man who's just released his new album, Weary Stars, to high acclaim. It's already made the top 20. He's set to head out on a national tour very soon, including a gig in Melbourne at the top on February 13th. You may know him from The Voice. He is Michael Painter. How are we, sexy man? G'day, mate. How you doing? This is, this is actually the first time I've ever been interviewed on a podcast. So really? This is very exciting for me. I'm breaking you in. There we go. You, you can say swear words. Does Michael Painter say swear words or not? Uh, no, I, don't, I don't really have that filthy mouth. Maybe I should develop one. I might, might be a bit cooler. I'd highly recommend it if you're going to do podcasts in the future. <laughs> okay, I'll work on it. Yeah, Get dude. back to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. First of all, man, um, happy birthday for last week. Thank you. It was, uh, it was, a, it was a good one. The, yeah. the, the big, big 28, pretty non-eventful, apart from <laughs> the fact that I can now go to over 28 nights at the local RSL. Yeah, in Werribee. So, uh, looking forward to that. Get, did you get spoiled or what? Uh, no, not really, not really. I just, I was working actually. It was pretty, pretty non-eventful, but uh, I'm getting spoiled in a lot of other ways at the moment, so I'm yeah. not Well, when you're famous, right, like yourself, do you get presents from like Creepy Stalker fans on your birthday? I do sometimes, yeah. I've got a few strange ones over the years. <laughs> Such as? Uh, I got a beach towel with my name embroidered in it. Um, <laughs> I'm, I don't really, I'm not a surf, surfer. Uh, I've never expressed a particular fondness for towels of the beach variety. So I don't know where they got the idea from, but uh, it was very, the thought was appreciated. The thought was, yeah. What would be the worst birthday present you've ever given a fellow musician? One. I don't think I give fellow musicians birthday presents. Okay. Then. I kind of, because you know, like we're all broke, and you know, if we, uh, if I give, you know, a muso a present, then he's gonna feel like he has to give me a present at my birthday, and it just you know perpetuates this never-ending circle of of brokenness. I've so, vicious, you know, vicious I'm, cycle. I'm here yeah. to break the circle. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, man. Um, last time we spoke, the album was just a rumor. You weren't giving any details on it. Now it's finally out. Were, were you nervous or excited before the release date? I think definitely more excited. I, I think I'm, you know, I'm, I'm I'm very happy with the album. I'm very proud of, of what it represents, and, and um, you know, I'm really happy for people to finally be able to get their hands on it. Um, yep. You know, if I thought it was crap, and uh, I was worried that people wouldn't like it, then I might be a bit nervous. But you know, I'm pretty, you know, I'm pretty confident and, and really proud in, in what what uh, I've made. I'm pretty sure by, by the sales, it's uh, it can't be crap. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's good to have it received well. It's good to, you know, you kind of question after all this time whether anybody actually cares anymore, whether they're stuck around. So it's, it's good to, to see people jumping on it and you know, having it become part of their lives, which is really cool. Yeah, yeah. It, it looks like um, I saw a picture. You've, you've realised how much hard work it is to release an independent CD. I saw that you're putting barcodes on covers for hours. It is. It is a lot of work. I've had to do that probably four or five other times since that picture as well. It kind of... I wish it would stop selling, so I stopped putting <laughs> stickers on them. But yeah, there's a lot of driving, a lot of organising, and a lot of uh, a lot of bills to pay. But it's it's very it's very cool. Well, what advice though do you have for for like independent musos who think the only way to be successful is to be signed to a label? Uh, just that it's definitely not true. I think that that's probably less and less becoming the goal for people more and more, which I think is great. I think people are kind of waking up to the fact that labels are just crap um or can be can be crap can be yeah um, yeah so i mean i always say i would not be the musician or the person i am today without sony you know they were very good to me and, and you know i was signed in kind of the golden age of when artists were signed and developed and record companies were patient and so they were very patient with me and, and gave me a lot of years to develop naturally um so you know i definitely wouldn't have been the, the the person I am today without that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it comes with a lot of other very frustrating things, which I'm sure we're all aware of. And, um, and you know, it's just a matter of, of balancing the good with the bad, I guess. Do you, do you think the best business decision you've made was to apply for The Voice? 
no, I think the, the best business decision I made was to start my production company. Okay. Square Productions. Yep. That's, that's, uh, that's been probably the, you know, the joy of my life the last couple of years, and it's going gangbusters now. We've got you know a couple of employees and booked it till the end of the year and stuff, so it's really great to have so many people wanting to write and, and record and produce with me, which is, which is really cool. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, I was really glad I did the show. It was a great experience and, and um, a lot of new challenges that I wouldn't have come up against otherwise, and hopefully I'm a better person on the other side of it. And the, the reason I bring it up is because you're being supported on tour by a girl from Geelong who was also on The Voice, Image and Bruff, which is pretty cool. I'm actually about 30 metres from her as we speak. I'm in the studio with her at the moment. Tell her Dana says hello. <laughs> When I get back in there, I'll pass it on. But yeah, we're uh, we're writing, we wrote and produced her first single, which is released very soon. Oh wow, and, uh, what's that one called? Uh, it's called Heart. Oh, that, that's, I thought that was one of her old songs. Have you like re rewritten it or something? We've rewritten it and rejigged it. And Beautiful. We've produced it and and uh, yes, yeah, so that's coming up on uh, on February fourteenth, and we're just in the process of writing her next single at the moment, which is uh, very exciting. Oh, go you. <laughs> mm. Well, the the, the two um the tour kicks off in Brisbane. Is there any reason you didn't start out in Melbourne? I have no idea, mate. You have to talk to my booking agent about that. I just <laughs> okay. kind of walk up, plug into the DI and sing like a girl and go home. Yeah. That's kind of what I do. <laughs> yeah. do, um, yeah. do, do contestants like shows like The Voice, do you tend to like keep in touch after the show's over or do you just disband? No, we well, keep in touch with a fair few of them. I think there was, there was a lot of really cool people on that show. There's a lot of people that worked really hard that are just musos like me. Um, there's a lot of... You know, people that were there for the wrong reasons as well as there was always going to be. But, um, <laughs> the, the people that you know I connected with on the show, I'm still talk regularly with post the show, so it's been really good. That's good. Well, another, another affiliation you have with Geelong is the fact that you are you filmed the clip for Weary Stars just up the road in Avalon. We did. Also, my manager was the or is the guitar player in the Little River Band. Oh wow! Which got their name from Little River, which is also very close awesome. to where we shot. <laughs> yeah. And my brother-in-law is also Gary Ablett Jr. So the Geelong connections never cease. Are you kidding me? No. How did I not know that? That's awesome. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, yeah, so the, there's a lot of Geelong. I love Geelong. I yeah. remember standing at the top of the light pole in 2007 when we won the, the flag. Yeah. I'm not sure how I got up there, but I definitely got <laughs> to the top of there. And... So, um, so uh, yeah. But, with the film clip, it looks like, to me, it looked like it would have been difficult to film because some points it's in fast motion, some points it's not, but you're still singing in time. Was there a certain way you had to do that? Yeah, that's, uh, it was really difficult. I had to do this thing called hiring a director to take care of it all. <laughs> okay. So he, he, he did all that stuff. He, that's, that's his brainchild. I just, I just rocked up and kept my hair pretty and mimed. He did everything else. Did you have any input into it, or was he just like, just sing on a beach? Oh, yeah, the, the concept and the story and the location and all that kind of thing was my idea, but in terms of the technical way that, that all that stuff was done, that's, you know, that's why you hire good people around you to get that stuff done. Yep, yep. Now, when are you going to play a gig in Geelong? Uh, I don't know. Another question for maybe, the booking uh, agent? <laughs> yeah, maybe you're going to have to, uh, to, to put on an event and get me down there to sing it. I will certainly do that, sir. <laughs> I'm planning to come down to the, uh... The next triathlon series, so oh, maybe yeah, you cool. have to do it around there. Yeah, yeah. Are you a, a bit of an athlete yourself? Uh, I'd like to think so, yes. So you are? <laughs> uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say I'm a triathlete, but I do a lot of running and a lot of CrossFit and stuff like that. So I like to, uh, my brother-in-law is, is also a triathlete, so I like to go down and watch him and just uh, hang down. It's a good vibe in Geelong, I like it. Yeah, yeah. Now, I'm assuming you're still a fan of Elvis. Always will be. Always will be. If you if you were asked to cover an Elvis song on Triple J, like a version, what would you choose? Yep. I'd choose a song called, probably, what's well, a tough one? There's a lot of ones I could choose. Probably a song called It Feels So Right, which you recorded in 1961 or 1960. Yep. Uh, which is probably a lesser known song, or maybe... Uh, another song we recorded for one of his movies called Surrender which I'm a big fan of would you would you sing it the way it was originally done or would you put your own spin on it uh, I think I'd always try and put my own spin on it try to keep true to the original but uh, put a bit of painter in there as well yeah that's it man alright is there anything else you'd like to mention to the listeners before I let you go no but uh, thank you for witnessing my the loss of my podcast virginity <laughs> I was a 
pleasurable for you. It was pleasurable for me, don't you worry. So now there you go, guys. Make sure, make sure you get a copy of Michael's new album, Weary Stars. Check him out at the Toff in Melbourne on February 13th. And for all the latest news and info, you can, of course, like him on Facebook. It's facebook.com slash Michael Paints and Music. Once again, mate, thanks for your time. I really do appreciate it. And um, good luck with the tour, buddy. Thanks, mate. See you out there. Catch you, dude.